ladies and gentlemen, to another installment of What's in the Box tonight. We are checking out last month's offering from Comic Bento, because of course, Comic Bento doesn't know how to get you your box in the month that it was supposed to arrive. So, naturally, it shows up a couple days late. I remember the theme to this one uh, was as seen on TV. So, not really sure if that's going to be a good thing or not, because I've seen the television tie-in books which Comic Bento has sent in the past. Right, that's one of those little air pouches. Uh, and those books I have yet to touch. I haven't touched Battlestar Galactica or Grimm. Um, there might have been another one, but I don't quite re remember. I remember those two. All right, let me get the box cut, or get the bag cut open here. Damn it. Such a pain. You know, I, I, I totally understand why they have to bag it. But, you know, maybe having some kind of, like, an easy tear system would be nice. That would uh, save us a whole lot of effort. Where the hell did the box go? All right. So now I get to try to transfer the books from the from here into there. Trying to do it without looking at them, which thankfully is easy this time because uh, they put them all on one side of the board. They didn't do that last month. It was, like, one on... There were, like, books on both sides of the center board. Anyway... Now, let's take a look at what we got here. First book, as seen on TV, once more is the theme we have. Oh, Jesus Christ. Rick and Morty, Volume 1. I'm probably one of the few people who is going to say it's Rick and Morty has never been funny. It's never going to be funny. Fuck that book. Okay. Wow, we are off to a bad start. <laughs> no, guys, seriously. If, if I seriously wanted unfunny sci-fi bullshit, I could probably go almost anywhere else and get something that's at least more creative than the bullshit that gets churned out on Rick and Morty week after week. All right, next book. Uh, hmm, this is the Garbage Pail Kids comic book Puketacular. I guess this counts as a as-seen-on-TV thing, because there was that Garbage Pail Kids animated series that... Never aired in the U.S., uh, but you can totally buy on DVD. No, I've never watched it. Well, the art style is pretty cool. It, it's definitely got... Uh, it definitely has the classic Garbage Pail Kids style, so... All right, at least this makes up for the Rick and Morty bullshit. Oh, good Lord. Wow, I'm just... I'm still looking at that thinking, Jesus, fuck, they even printed a shitty comic based on a shitty show. That just floors me a touch. Up next... Marvel presents Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., a show I watched like three episodes of, because, by the way, out of those, only the first one was actually any good. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., volume, volume one, and, you know, I really, wow, this just looks so weird. I want you to look at the guy in the middle. I am very familiar with comic books. I didn't know Marvel had bought Cyborg from DC Comics and threw him in S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. Oh, boy. That might actually be sort of decent, but I'm going to throw it on the pile of bullshit alongside Rick and Morty just because I don't care for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> All right, final book. Please, dear God, be something good. It's The Blacklist. All right. Um, a little bit of a story. I've never watched The Blacklist. It actually is one of those shows I really do want to watch at some point. I may buy, like, the first season on Blu-ray and give it a watch, because it does look fascinating. It really does. Or perhaps maybe I can give this thing a read. I'll see, I'll see how this turns out. If this is any good, then I can totally move on to watching The Blacklist show. So, all right, awesome. Uh, out of four books, we got two of them I actually kind of care about. One of them barely ties in with the theme. So we have one that directly fits the theme. So, we have one good one that directly fits the theme, one that, again, barely fits the theme, one that kind of fits the theme, and Rick and Morty, which I'm going to, which I'm going to take a fucking match to, because that book does not deserve to exist. You know, you know, Bento, um, there are a lot of things you could have put in here that might have been a touch better. I'm just going to throw a couple of suggestions out there. Um... I know that Nickelodeon is printing a is printing a fucking is printing a fucking Invader Zim comic, which is being written by Invader Zim creator Joan and fucking Vasquez, and they're up to like their third trade. You could have put the first one in there; that would have been vastly better than Rick and Morty. But then again, you honestly could have put a dog turd in that box, and it would have been better than Rick and Morty. So uh, at least I got 
two books that look, you know, decent. And I am probably going to give Agents, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. a read at some point, just not really seeing that happening anytime soon. Now, I have to step away for a sec because I forgot to grab the books I've read from previous comic bentos. I, I, I really don't have a long list this, this time. It's going to be kind of quick, but, um, I ha but I have to go and grab those, so I'll be right back. All right, guys, I am back, and I have brought along the three books I have since read from previous comic bentos. And uh, what I read here was not that good for the for the most part. I am going to go into detail. First up, we had Bubble Gun, which I was unable to finish. Got about halfway through this painfully short book, and I kept finding myself falling falling asleep while I was reading it because our characters are kind of flat and pointless and you know the uh, and the and the story itself just basically feels like a shitload of sci-fi freaking like cliches all just slammed into a fucking blender there was nothing really fun here um, in fact I found a whole lot of plot points that were being lifted directly from a horrendous movie I covered for my other major series on this channel reaction and review when, when your comic is lifting plot points directly from, of all things, ultra-fucking-violet, uh, yeah, that is a bad sign. That is a terrible sign. This book kind of sucked. Now, maybe, now maybe if you're a fan of ultra-violet, you're a fan of ultra-cliche sci-fi shit, and you don't mind if people are, you know, going for the easiest possible, you know, like, like, stories and characters, then perhaps maybe this will be for you. For me, it really wasn't. This other one, I wanted I wanted to give a shot. I kind of had my doubts on it when it first came in, but I thought, what the hell, I should really at least give it, give it a fair shot, and that was Shock. Yes, yes, that actually is pronounced Shock. They've got a huge, like, paragraph, like, way early on in here. Where the hell was it? Uh, yeah, like right here, this whole page tells you about how it is pronounced shock and not, you know, Zock or, you know, cock or anything else you could possibly say where, you know, because X, because X can stand for a whole lot of different sounds. So, yeah, shock. Um, I first looked at it and I said it looks like it's just basically a nature fucking documentary turned into a comic book. And that's pretty much exactly what happened here. It basically is a nature, it, it basically is documenting the uh, trek of a great white shark as it goes from one end of the ocean to the other, and it tries to add character to a whole lot of the animals you see, including the sharks and the seals, and the, and, and, and you know personally, if I really cared about, about sharks, if I absolutely was just, at, if, if I was fascinated by sharks, I would love this. If I cared even the slightest about sharks, this thing would be right up my alley. I was hoping for it to kind of sort of wow me, and it really didn't. And um, that could possibly be because of my disinterest in sharks. That's why I can totally recommend this if you are into sharks or if you're fascinated by sea life. This will this this book will be amazing for you. For me, I found it to be incredibly dull and I had a very hard time finishing the book. Now, another one that I uh, didn't have a hard time finishing, in fact, this one here's got a pretty nice story to it, is the book that fascinated me the most last month, and that was Sam and Fuzzy Fix Your Problem. Now, this thing here is based on a web comic. I didn't know it was based on a web comic when I first, you know, read it, but I absolutely adored this thing, so much so that I actually went on to the uh, website for this, and instead of just reading more of the webcomic, I bought the other three volumes like this, which they have printed, and then proceeded to read all of them, cover to fucking cover, within about two days. I absolutely binge, binge fucking read the hell out, out, out of these, and I love them. I then went and I tried to read the webcomic online. Unfortunately, guys, once you have read a physical copy of something, to, to attempt to read it on a screen, it doesn't feel the same. So now I'm stuck waiting for the fifth volume of, uh, the, of, this, of this specific Sam and Fuzzy arc. Eventually, I'm probably going to buy the colossal two-volume omnibus that covers the ten years' worth of webcomics between the start of it and this volume. But um, what I read here was amazing. The art style—it's—it's kind of funny. I mentioned I mentioned Jonan Jonan Vasquez earlier. 
this this you know book's art 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 style is somewhat reminiscent of what Jonan of what Jonan Vasquez has done in Zim and in and in Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, only it's only it's a little bit more polished, which looks which which, which gives it a very interesting look, and the writing. The writing in this thing is just so sharp, so awesome, so clever. And I know that the artist, uh, the artist and the creator, his name is Sam. His name is Sam Logan. On his website, he actually he actually has a spot where you are able to commission artwork. I loved the art style in this so much. I'm almost tempted to email him and attempt to commission a little bit of artwork for me that I will then use on this on this channel because. I absolutely adore how he does how he does what he does. His art is fucking awesome. So yeah, guys, I can totally recommend this 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 volume. I know you can buy this volume on Amazon rather rather fucking cheap. I think it's like sixteen bucks. But the other three volumes, you actually have to go to a different uh, website to buy, and I can't remember the website right off the top of my head. I'm probably gonna put a link at like the bottom. I'm probably gonna put the URL at, at like the bottom of the screen or something. You guys have got to read these things, or you can head over to I believe it is salmonfuzzy.com. You can go and read the web comic there, and I guarantee you, you are gonna fucking love it. This thing kicks ass. Now, looking back at this month. Again, I'm kind of happy I got two books that look decent. Um, still, just that fucking Rick and Morty book. God, I, I still don't see what the hell is so fucking funny about that fucking show. I have yet to find a joke in there that's even halfway interesting. But hey, you know what? You know what? That you know what? that honestly is just fucking me. I know. I know. I'm just. I I really wish I could just get into the head of people who find that kind of shit funny and just see. What exactly is it that makes that that makes that makes them laugh about it? It just I'm kind of puzzled more than anything else. Anyway, uh, I am going to stop fucking rambling now uh, because I actually have to get to work in about an uh, hour and a half. So at least I have this thing edited and ready, and I feel really awesome about that. Anyway, guys, with that, we come to the close of another installment of What's in the Box. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.